Today, we're going to make a granny square. These are very easy for beginners to learn how to crochet, and they're very versatile. They can be used in many different ways. I've chosen four colors to go into this granny square. One, two, three, four. And you can get very, very creative granny squares, but this is what we're gonna do today. I've chosen cream, a kind of a steel blue or a gray, a white, and a more traditional gray. And I think it makes a very pretty granny square. So, to get started, we're going to need the yarn. We're going to need a crochet hook that's the appropriate size for your yarn. And you can find that by looking at the label of your yarn and it'll tell you what crochet hook size you need. In my case, I'm gonna need a five millimeter, which is what I have. Then you're gonna need a scissor of any kind. And you're gonna need a tapestry needle. We use tapestry needles because they have very large eyes and you have to be able to handle the yarn through that eye. So you need to get the appropriate size tapestry needle as well. Now for experienced crocheters, the next few minutes are going to be just rehashing what you already know. So you can just skip on through. But for you beginners, these are very important things you should know. And one is how to hold the crochet hook properly. And there's two very effective, equally appropriate ways. And one is the knife method, which I prefer in particular. And you put that in your hand. Your palm of your hand kind of goes over the top of it. Your pointer finger is on the upper shaft. Your thumb is on the thumb rest. And your fingers coil around. And you just hold it like you would hold a knife when you're cutting meat. And then an equally effective and appropriate way is the pencil method, which is self-explanatory as well. You hold it like you normally hold a pencil. And that is with the hook laying on top of your hand, your pointer finger and your tall finger on either side of that shaft, and your thumb again on the thumb rest. And they'll be kind of resting on the rest of those fingers instead of having them coiled around there. And that's equally effective. I think it's just a little bit harder on the wrist and I do have arthritis, so I don't like to use that method. And this is the method I use, the knife method. So we need to start any granny square with a magic circle. And we do that because we have to start in the round and any other method used will leave a large gaping hole here in the circle and it's not as attractive for our granny square. We want a nice tight circle and the magic circle will give us that. So this is how the very, very easy way to do a magic circle. I've watched a million YouTube videos, so confusing. You're twisting and contorting your hand all around and this is just so much easier. Lay your tail end of your yarn over your open palm. Loop that working end of the yarn around until you have a loop. And pinch where that joins, and you can slip that right off your hand. You're pinching the join, no problem. Then the rest of your yarn, the working end, is hanging down, and it'll bisect that loop. You take your hook, slip it under that bisecting yarn, And now you're holding, you're pinching, still pinching the join, but you're pinching it on your hook. And you pick up that working end of the yarn, leaving the loop dangling. And now you're gonna make a chain stitch. And for those of you who don't know chain stitch, it's very simple. You go down, you go back, you go up, and now you have captured yarn on your hook that's called a yarn over and you just pull it through the loop little loop on your hook so you need to know how to hold your yarn as well to provide the proper tension if you just left your yarn loose like this you couldn't pick it up you couldn't it's just too loose and floppy and likewise if you hold it too tight 
you just produce the tightest work and you can't get your hook into the prior row to make your stitches. So we need to learn how to hold it with just a tiny amount of tension. And this is how I do it. I have my palm up and I slip this yarn here through between my little finger and my ring finger. And that's just in slipped in there. And then I turn my hand over 180 degrees so you see the back of my hand now. And then I'll take the pointer finger and slip that under that yarn so that I have yarn over my pointer finger, under these two middle fingers, and again over my little finger. And now I just turn my hand perpendicular and I'm literally all set up to crochet. And as we crochet, we pinch this area here below the loop that's on the hook, we pinch that gently between our tallest finger and our thumb. And with our hands in this position, we can crochet really nicely. So for this granny square, we're going to do two more chains. Remember our chain? We went down, we went back, we went up, and that captures the yarn called yarn over, and we just pull it through the loop that's on our hook and now I readjust my hand so that I'm pinching again at the top of the work I've got here at the bottom of the loop on the hook. We want one more we go down, we go back, we go up that's called a yarn over we pull it through. So now we have three chains there and that is going to serve as a double crochet. Now don't get too hung up on this. It seems confusing. It's not really. We're going to do two more double crochets right here. And a double crochet is get your yarn over again by going down, back and up. You got yarn over. And now go in to that magic circle, round behind the magic circle, behind the yarn, and pull that up. And now I have actually have three loops on my hook and I go yarn over one more time I pull through two not all three and I now I have two loops on my hook I go yarn over and I pull through two and that is our first proper double crochet but in this case it's going to serve as our second double crochet because we're counting the three chains there as a double crochet. Now we're going to make another, another double crochet. So we're going to go down, back, up. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to go down, yes, back up and go in to the circle, the magic circle. Grab some more yarn, pull it up till we give three loops on the hook. And then we're going to do yarn over again, pull through two, leaving two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two more. Now I have three, what I'm considering three double crochets, and we're going to chain stitch two. So down, up, back, pull through, down, back, up, pull through. That was it. That was our chain stitches again. Now we're going to repeat this three more times because in this magic circle, we're going to have four sets. And the sets consist of three double crochets and a chain two. So we've got our first set. Now we need three more. So we go get yarn here. So we're ready to do a double crochet. We go in to the loop, pull it up. And we want three loops on our hook and we have them. So we go yarn over pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I'm working with very poor yarn. I will never get this yarn again. We've, we've got it, we're using it, but just it, when you see me crocheting with this, you'll kind of see it split a little bit. So it's, it's not good to work with, but hopefully the yarn you're using will be better. Yarn over, 
into the circle, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops, yarn over, pull through two. Oops, see, there it was split. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Another double crochet. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And I have done three double crochets, so now I chain two. And that's my second set. Let's do the third set. So we want two. Excuse me. We want three double crochets. This first round is the most awkward round. You will not have this much trouble when you get to the second, third, and fourth rounds. Chain two. It's another set. Now we're going to do our fourth set. done three double crochets. Now I'm going to do my last two chains. Now here's where the magic comes in for the magic circle. Take your little tail end, which we have been crocheting over this whole time, and you gently but firmly pull that taut. And look at this. We have a lovely, lovely little square. And we want to join that square, join this end up with the front of it. So we take the top of our chain three, we're going to do a slip stitch. We're just going to go into the top of our chain three, pull some yarn through there, and keep pulling, pulling it through the loop that's on our hook. And there we have, we've already completed the first round. So to tie this off, this is how you finish off, you go in the order of a chain stitch, but you're not going to complete it totally. You're just going to pull it through, just like that. Pull a big loop through. We're going to take our scissors, leaving a long tail, six inches or so, and now we can continue pulling through on that loop and pull that tight. And there we have the first round. So our second round, if I follow the example of my demo square here, will be the steel blue. And we need to join this onto our cream, cream colored round. And we don't want to make a knot. So we just go into any corner. And if you'll notice, all those chain twos we did are the turned out to be the corners. We have the three double crochets and that chain two for a corner, three double crochets, chain two for a corner, three double crochets, chain two for a corner, three double crochets, and chain two for the corner. I would normally be weaving in my ends as I go along, and we'll talk about that later. But for this demo, I'm going to wait until the end to weave them in. So we're going to kind of live with that, those little tails hanging there for just a little while. So take your crochet hook, stick it through any corner, right under the stitches. Don't go through any stitches, just go right under that chain two. And then I'm just going to pull in, leaving about a six inch tail. Oop. 
pull that in there till it looks like this. And now we do a chain stitch. Pull it through and now it's fastened. It's very tight, fastened on to our work. And you can drop that tail now. We're only going to work with the one. And we're going to do two chains. One and two. And that's going to serve as one of our double crochets. And now in each corner, we're going to do three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets. So this counts as one double crochet. So let's do two more. All working into that corner. We don't go into a stitch per se, we just go into the under the chain two. So now we have our three double crochets and we're gonna do two chains. That's gonna form the corner of, for this round. And now we want to finish that corner off with three double crochets. There you go. Looking very good. So now we go to the next corner. We always work into openings. And in this case, all the openings are corners. And you'll see the next round, we're gonna have additional openings, but for this time, it's a corner. So remember, every corner has three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets. So we go directly into the double crochet here. Our chain two. One more double crochet. And we have our second corner. Let's go into our third corner. Let me get some yarn here so I don't have to keep fighting that. We do our three double crochets. And when you get going, see how fast this is? It just moves along so fast. And this color, for some reason of this yarn, same brand, is not splitting. Now I've done my three double crochets. I chain two and do my last three double crochets for that corner. And three. And we have three corners. And now let's do our last corner. We do our three double crochets. chain two and the last three double crochets. One more. And we've gone all the way around on our second round and now we need to join. So we find our original chains and we just go into the top one with a slip stitch. Just pull it through and 
continue pulling through to that loop that's on your hook and now you've joined so now you're gonna start a chain stitch and just pull it into a loop don't complete it and leaving about six inches you cut that off and you pull all the rest through and tighten that up that makes a nice tight knot now you'll see what we've got here we have got our corners, our four corners, openings there, but now we have got two additional openings. So our next round, we will be crocheting into each one of these openings, but on the side openings, those four additional openings we have, we will only do a three double crochet. We only do this three, chain two, three, to make a corner. So the next color we've used is white. So if we want to keep this like our demo, we'll do white. And do you remember how we joined? We put our hook through a corner opening and we just made sure we had a tail of at least six inches and we pulled that through and using both the tail and the working end, we did a chain stitch, one chain stitch. And now we can drop the tail and just work with one yarn. So we're gonna chain two. And now we're going to proceed with our corner pattern, which is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And I'm gonna count this chain here as one double crochet. So I just need two more. And now I have my three. So let's do two chains. It gives us our corner and we'll need three more double crochets to complete that corner. That wanted to split just a little bit, but it, it didn't, so maybe this white will be good to work with as well. All right, I have my first corner. Now here we have this opening in the middle that isn't a corner, but it is an opening, so we're just going to go directly to it, into it, with three double crochets. And we finish that middle opening. Now we've come to another corner, so what's the pattern we use for the corner? Three double crochets, a chain two, and three double crochets. I have my three double crochets. I'll do my chain two and then three double crochets. You see how quickly this works up? Granny squares are wonderful. They're a lot of fun and you can use them for a lot of things. So I finished that corner and I'm gonna go, I've got another opening, but it is not a corner, so it is a three double crochet. And now we come to the next opening, 
is a corner. So we're going to do our three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. chain two and we'll start on our last three double crochets for this corner our next opening is not a corner so we're just going to do three double crochets And I'm coming to a corner so I will want to do three double crochets chain two three double crochets chain two crochet here and we finished that corner all I'm left with is one more opening and that is not a corner so it's only going to get a three double crochet My little tails are in my way. Like I said, if I was doing this just on my own, I would be weaving in those ends as I go. But I just don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. And so we finished. We don't have any other openings. So we are going to finish this like we did every other round. We're going to go into the top of that chain stitch area. And we're just going to pull through to make a slip stitch and pull through the loop that's on our hook and that's finished now we're going to start a chain stitch but we're going to just pull through and this is how we're finishing that off we're going to leave at least six inches to weave in cut that off and make our knot and now we have three rounds of that and look what we have now we have our four corners we'll always have our four corners but on each side we have two openings again two openings two openings because we're making this bigger and bigger so the last color we're working with here is the gray and remember how we started off with that we just stuck our hook through any corner and leaving at least six inches for a tail we pulled that loop through and then we made a chain stitch so that we could fasten securely and this so that's fastened on our new color is part of our piece now drop that tail and only use the one fiber there so we're going to do the two chains and they're going to serve as our double crochet and since it's a corner we make three double crochets a chain two and three double crochets so let's do our second double crochet
and now chain two. Our next three double crochets. Do we say double crochets or double crochet stitches? I don't know. And we have that corner. Now our next opening is not a corner, so we're just going to do three double crochets. next opening and that again is not a corner so it is going to get three double crochets three double crochets now our next opening is a corner so we're it's going to get three double crochets a chain two and three double crochets chain two and the last three double crochets for this corner I do like the way this yarn is slipping nicely through my fingers. I just don't like the way that, especially that cream colored, split on me. So we finished that corner. We're going to go to another opening, which is not a corner, so it'll just get the three double crochets. And our next opening again is not a corner. So we're going to do three double crochet. Our next opening is a corner. So again, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Now, I got to going lickety split along there and I made an extra double crochet. You see how easy that was to pull that out? And I'm back to my three double crochets and I'm going to chain two. It just goes so fast you have to watch that you haven't just daydreamed your way into too many stitches. These are fabulous for sitting in front of the TV. You could talk, you can watch the TV show. You can get a lot done in the evening when you would just have been wasting your time. So that corner's done. The next opening is not a corner. So you guessed it, three double crochets. Next opening is not a corner. Three double crochets. And then I come to the corner, so I will do my corner 
clusters, which are three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets. This is really shaping up. We've got the last corner done. So we only have two more openings and they are not corners so they'll both get the three double crochet cluster. And we're done. We've got, gone through every single opening in the previous row. So we're going to finish this like we did every other round and we're going to slip under the top of the chain stitch row and we're just going to slip stitch that through the loop that was on our hook. And then we're going to start a chain stitch but we're going to pull it Leave at least six inches and we're going to pull through to make a knot. And we basically have got the same as the demo. You've completed your first granny square. <laughs>